In this lecture, I'll introduce the concept of standard editions calibration. I'm going to do this by talking a bit about the background, then look at how we make and measure the standards, then we'll use those measurements to plot a calibration graph and see how that can be used to determine the concentration of an unknown sample. Then we'll round up by making mention of how the errors can be handled in this situation. So, standard edition calibration then, it's used in instrumental analysis to determine the concentration of an unknown sample. The sample is spiked with a known amount of analyte to create a series of different standards where the sample is present within each of those standards. So it's a little bit different from standard series calibration, where you just calibrate with known amounts of analyte and then measure the unknown separately. And this is done to help overcome matrix effects. So within any sample in analytical science, we have the analyte, which is the component we're interested in identifying or quantifying. And then by definition, everything else is the matrix. So we decide what the analyte is going to be. And then as a result of that, anything else in there is referred to as the matrix. And those matrix components can have an effect on the instrument response to the analyte but by calibrating with the sample and the matrix present in each of these standards it helps to overcome matrix effects. So, moving on to making the standards then the first thing that we have to make, the first solution we have to make is a diluted sample. So in this case we're going to put 10 mils of the sample in and 90 mils of water to make that up to a total of 100 milliliters. And we'll give that a stir to make sure it's well mixed and so in this situation there's no extra analyte been added and the concentration of the extra analyte added is zero and we refer to this sample having a spike of zero millimolar so the spike is the concentration of analyte that we have added so then we go on to make our first standard again we add 10 milliliters of the sample and then in this situation what we're going to do is add 10 milliliters of a 10 millimolar stock solution of the analyte. Then we'll add an additional 80 millilitres of water to make it up to a total of 100 millilitres. And again, we'll give this a good stir to make sure that this solution is well mixed. What we need to do in this situation is ask what is the concentration of analyte that we have added to the solution? To do that, we have to use the equation M1V1 equals M2V2 and M1 in this situation equals 10 millimolar because we had a 10 millimolar stock solution of analyte and we added 10 milliliters of that. The final total volume was 100 milliliters and that will then allow us to answer the question what is M2. So to do that we need to rearrange this equation so M2 equals M1 times V1 divided by V2. Put the numbers into this equation, we see that M2 equals 1 millimolar. So in this situation we say that the spike equals 1 millimolar. That is the concentration of analyte within this solution that we have added. Okay, so the next standard, again we add 10 milliliters of sample. This time we're adding 20 milliliters of our stock solution of analyte and a another 70 millilitres of water to bring the total volume up to 100 and again we can give this a good stir to make sure it's well mixed and we can ask the same question again what is the concentration of analyte that was added to the solution so we use the same approach as we saw before but this time we've added 20 millilitres and if we rearrange that equation again put in the relevant numbers we see that this time M2 equals 2 millimolar. So in this situation we say that the spike is 2 millimolar. That is the concentration of analyte that we have added in to this standard solution. Obviously the total analyte concentration in there is higher because there will be some from the sample as well. So the spike is really referring to this extra concentration of analyte that we have put in there. Third standard then add 30 millilitres of the analyte stock bring that up to a total of 100 millilitres 
uh, give it a good stir. This time the spike equals three millimolar. Okay, so now that we've made all of these standard solutions, we can measure them for all of the different spike concentrations from zero through to three millimolar, and we get an instrumental response for each of those. So we choose a suitable instrument that's going to respond to our analyte in a linear manner and the the response of that instrument increases as the spike increases because the concentration of analyte goes up throughout those standards and we get the readings that we see there in the table for this example. So now we have these readings we can create a calibration graph and we're going to plot the instrument response on the y-axis and the spike on the x-axis. So we can plot the calibration data points, the XY data points that we've recorded and we can put a line of best fit through those. Because we've used an instrument with a linear response we put an, an equation for a straight line through those, so y equals mx plus c. And to calculate the concentration of the unknown what we have to do is extrapolate backwards to where the line of best fit crosses the x-axis. And it's this extrapolated value of x that's going to tell us something about the concentration of the unknown. So it actually turns out that the absolute value of this extrapolated x value is the concentration of the unknown sample. So we've got y equals mx plus c. And to get x to equal xe, we need y to equal 0. So we've got 0 equals mx E plus C. Rearranging that we see that XE equals minus C divided by M. So overall the unknown concentration is the absolute of C divided by M. So let's look at an example of this. Here's our XY data points from earlier on. The line of best fit through these data points is Y equals 0.506X plus 1.361. And of course we said that the concentration equals C divided by M and the absolute of that value. So plugging some numbers into this, we see that the concentration equals 2.69 millimolar. And of course that was for the diluted sample that we made. To get the concentration of the original sample, we have to multiply that by 10. And we see that we've got 26.9 millimolar in that situation. To treat the errors for this particular type of calibration, we need to use the equation that's shown here. So the standard error of the extrapolated x value equals the standard error of the y estimate, sy of x, divided by the gradient of the line of best fit, multiplied by the square root of all the terms that we see in here. So we've got 1 divided by nc, the number of calibration points, including the sample data point, then the mean of all of those y values we've recorded squared, and then we see we've got the gradient again and the sum of these individual x values, the individual concentration values we made, or rather the spike in this situation, minus the mean spike squared. And that is how you treat the error in this situation.